The content of this video may not be suitable for children under the age of 14. Viewer's discretion is advised. All material was filmed following Ajrit's guidelines. Hey guys and welcome to this vlog. Um, today's kind of a sad vlog. I am touring Ajrit's and I want to make sure that everyone that's watching this uh, knows that this video serves for educational purposes only. Um, so I hope you do learn something from this. Now the first half of the video is going to be the gas chambers and the women's camp. That doesn't have as much as my commentary other than a voiceover. And the second half of the video has um, I tour the men's camp and I'm speaking more to the camera rather than voiceover. So if that's something you'd rather, go ahead and skip to that part. Um, but here is the gates of death to Ajrit. That is the ramp and platform where selection happened. So let's get this tour started. It is Ajrit's Birka now. It's Ajrit's two, the Hello. second camp. Hello. Hello. From Israel. Yes. Um, so yeah, Hello, people. Vlog. Yes. For so YouTube. for YouTube. So Hello. people come here from all over the world. There's a group of students here from Israel, uh, but there's people flying here from all over the world. So right now we're about to start the, the tour for Auschwitz Birkenau. Um, I will be leaving commentaries in and out of the videos in between the videos with a voiceover because we can't really speak while we're in the tour. But it is very interesting and without any further ado, let's begin. As you can see, it goes on for yards and yards and miles it's huge it's 170 acres over 300 barracks which most were destroyed and these were named the gates of death most of the people who came into these gates most likely did not come out of that and that over there is the famous platform You may recognize this from Schindler's List. There's a scene in the movie where they come in through this road into those gates. On October 1941, Heinrich Himmler ordered the construction of Auschwitz II to commence. He was the second most powerful man in the Reich. He was named the Reichsfuhrer. Here at Auschwitz-Birkenau, over 1.1 million people perished during World War II. Jews and other minorities from all over Europe were sent here, and about 85% of them went straight to the gas chambers. The other 15 to 20% that were spared were sent to slave labor, and they were divided in this camp between women and men. Women on the left side, men on the right side. Those who were selected to work were forced into slave labor under very harsh weather conditions and work conditions. They would work about 12 to 14 hours a day and endure long roll calls of about three to four hours. Those who were selected to work only lasted about one month or two months at most. Their diet consisted of a piece of bread in the morning or in the evening, whatever the Nazis thought was fit, and a poor soup of dirty water and rotten vegetables. Prisoners were brought from all over Europe. Oftentimes a trip from Athens, Greece would take 10 days and 10 nights. They were brought in these cattle cars. They would squeeze anywhere from 80 to 120 prisoners with no food, water, or lavatories. There was just a bucket on the floor and a small opening in the window. This gate here led into the men's camp, but it also led to a provisional gas chamber in the back of the camp. 
Two of the gas chambers are back there by that forest, and where we are standing now is known as the platform. Upon prisoner arrival, Dr. Joseph Mengelin and other SS officers would choose between life or death for the prisoners. Due to the high temperatures during summer and most of the barracks being made out of wood, a security company advised the Nazis to install pools to prevent fires from occurring. As we walk through the camp, you'll also notice many ditches on the ground due to severe rains and thunderstorms in summer as well. This is to prevent flooding throughout the camp. Another interesting fact about Auschwitz-Birkenau is that the Nazis forced the prisoners to build their barracks. Back here is where the crematoriums were located. One of them was destroyed by the Nazis and another one was exploded by the prisoners in a successful revolt. The Sando Commando were prisoners who would manage the gas chambers. Unfortunately, due to the revolt, out of 600 Sando Commando, 500 were murdered. 100 were kept because operations had to keep going. The Nazis created an industrialized system for murdering. The average life expectancy of a prisoner arriving at Auschwitz was only about an hour from the time they arrived at the platform to the time they were put in the furnace. Towards the end of the war, the Nazis forced the prisoners to build the train tracks to reach all the way to the crematorium to speed up the process. Here's one of the gas chambers that the prisoners were able to blow up during the revolt.
between two of the main crematoriums lies a memorial for all those who perished. This is the entrance into the gas chambers. Prisoners would go down those stairs, undress, walk into the gas chamber. Within 20 minutes, most of them were already dead. From there, they were carried by the Sando Commando into the furnace room and their bodies were disposed of. The Nazis were experts at deceiving the prisoners. Since most of them traveled anywhere between five to 10 days with no food or water, they were told that they were going to take a shower and then they were going to eat hot food. Around the gas chamber, the Nazis planted gardens to keep the prisoners calm. And oftentimes they would have an orchestra playing music for them to keep them calm. The prisoners who were not sent directly to their death at the gas chambers were immediately processed and imprisoned. They were given one striped pajama and wooden clogs that oftentimes wouldn't fit them. Right now there's grass everywhere, but most of the time it looked like this, mud everywhere. Many of them had infections in their feet and many other diseases. Right now we're walking into the women's camp. Once the Nazis knew that the Allied forces were moving in, they blew up most of the camp. Thank you. 
These are the barracks that the prisoners lived in. Some were made of bricks, others of wood. These were originally intended to hold 50 horses, but they housed over 1,000 prisoners, each barrack. They had to sleep on bunks. Oftentimes, they were too weak to get to the top bunk, so many slept on the floor or squished in the bottom barracks. The camp was surrounded by electrical barbed wire. Suicide was not an option for the prisoners. The Nazis wanted them to endure the harsh conditions and suffer. The only way of surviving Auschwitz was making friends and finding ways to survive together. Working indoors was probably the only way to survive for long at Auschwitz because they didn't have to endure the harsh weather conditions. Either way, they still had to work 12 to 14 hours. The camp had many different duties, from Sando Commando, which was the gas chamber duty, to Shiza Commando, which was cleaning the bathrooms. There was hospitals, there was kitchen duties. If you had one of these jobs, you had a chance at survival. One account of a survivor I recommend is Kitty Hart. She still lives to this day. She states that one of the best ways to survive in Auschwitz is to not do anything and hide. The worst thing you can do is be noticeable. Dr. Joseph Mengele was the head SS doctor at Auschwitz. He would perform horrific experiments primarily on women and twins. He would inject twins with diseases to see how they would react. He also was obsessed with injecting their eyes, seeing if they can change their color. There's a couple of twins that survived these experiments and lived to tell their story. Although there's no official record of it, it is believed that about five babies were born at Auschwitz and only two have been known to survive.
The barracks at Auschwitz were divided into blocks. Each block served a different purpose. We are approaching block 26, the block of death. Here, female prisoners would await their death in the gas chamber. Every day selections occurred and prisoners already knew their fate. Unfortunately, they were too weak to fight back. These are the original bunks the women would wait in for their death. Oftentimes, they were so weak to climb to the top that multiple prisoners would squeeze in the bottom. And the men's camp was on this side. Now, this side right here is a very particular. Um, sorry, it was the quarantine. Um, more than anything, we know about the Czech Jews that were sent to quarantine um, because they were under protection by the Red Cross. Um, so, yes, the Czechs were sent here for quarantine and oftentimes the Nazis would make films. They would make films to show the life in Auschwitz. Um, there's a really good book that I will leave the, the, the name in the description. Um, it's called Escape from Auschwitz. It was a successful escape by a Jew. Um, I don't want to ruin the book for you, but it's definitely a must read. His name was Siegfried Lieder. I'm sorry if I pronounced his last name wrong, but it's it's a really, really good book. Um, most Jews from the Therischenstadt ghetto were transported here um, and they survived. Uh, a couple of them survived. They were allowed to live in there with their clothes, with their personal clothes. Some were even allowed to be mixed with their families. Um, it's just very devastating. I'm going to try to go into the barracks now. These are wooden barracks. And the barracks on the women's side were mostly made out of bricks, although there was some wooden bricks. Um, on the women's side, as I mentioned before, um, there was the block of death, which was block 26 and 25, I believe. Uh, that's where the Jews were, the Jewish women were kept before being sent to the gas chambers. And in the men's camp, it was block seven. I'm gonna try to look for it now. I haven't stepped foot in there yet. And then also, in the woman's side of the camp was Dr. Mangalin's experiment block and also a male sterilization block, which if I'm not mistaken, is that shack that is right there. But the video doesn't show, or you can't feel the energy that there is here um, through a video. It's, it's just so strong. It's a very, very strong and weird energy. Um, so I'm gonna walk into the men's side of the camp now.
is the entrance into the men's camp. Um, if you notice, there's a lot of moats and they had two purposes. Um, it rains a lot here, so there's a very high chance of flooding. Um, so that's why a lot of the camp has like waves all over it. And also, suicide wasn't an option for the Jews. The Nazis wanted to kill them. They, suicide wasn't something that was easy. Although there was an electrical barbed wire fence there, it was very often not reached. Um, there's a wooden barrack here. I'm not sure what it is. Let's read. Compound. Bila is compound function as a quarantine camp, as I mentioned before, for men from different countries used from 43 to 44. The purpose of quarantine, apart from identifying those who might have infectious diseases, was to terrorize newly arrived concentration camp prisoners to teach absolute submission to camp discipline. From April to November, sick prisoners from other parts of the camp, both men and women, lived in, same, in some of the barracks of this compound. So let's take a look inside. You can like feel the energy. But yes, this just goes on and on and on and on. And right now we can see grass. We can see grass, but there was no grass. It was all mud, all mud. And in the winter, it was full of snow. So some survivors say that sometimes in winter, although the cold was unbearable, they can have some water because there was no water. Um, they would have about 400 calories a day of a piece of bread that wasn't really even bread some soup and very very little water they were allowed to shower once a month every 30 days and their uniforms disinfected but if you were at Altruitz you weren't expected to live a very long time there's an account, an account that I recommend um, you watch on YouTube is Kitty Hart's account. The way she tells her story, it's just so full of energy and so vivid. Um, I truly recommend you see Kitty Hart's testimony and she tours Auschwitz herself. So yes, we're gonna head back to Krakow. Tomorrow we'll be going to Schindler's factory. And I'll be blogging there as well. Um, for those of you that don't know who Oscar Schindler is, look up his story before you watch the next video to kind of understand. But he was a Polish businessman, that German-Polish businessman that saved 1,200 Jews, buying them. Um, but we'll cover that more tomorrow. Thank you for subscribing. Um, thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe. Um, and leave in the comments what you thought, what you learned, if you knew about this, if you didn't know about this. Um, and spread the word of this video so people can see how bad things were and how bad things can get. Because history can repeat itself. If we don't show love to one, to one another, history can repeat itself. Let's not spread hate, let's spread love. And rest in peace the victims of Auschwitz 1 and Auschwitz Birkenau and any victims throughout World War II. Thank you for watching.